Hi, I'm Peter Kelmstrom of Kelmstrom.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I'll talk to you about unique permissions. Unique permissions are very useful on documents, but you probably don't want to allow your users to set their own permissions on documents. That becomes very complex to teach them that, and also it probably becomes a mess because people do it wrong. So doing that with a workflow, automating that process is really powerful. However, it can only be done with a SharePoint 2010 workflow. So that's something you need to consider. You cannot do it with a flow. You cannot do it with a SharePoint 2013 workflow at this moment. The scenario that I've thought up for this example is that we have a class. And in that class, we have homework that needs to be submitted. But of course, the students should not see each other's homework. So I'm just going to change this name now of this document library be homework instead. And the easiest way to make sure that people don't see each other's things, actually to make it appear as though people don't see each other's things, is of course to modify the view. So if I modify the view so that I filter out all those items that were not created by me, that creates a view that is filtered, of course. So I'll have created by and enter me there. All right. But so this is a convenient step. So if that's enough for you, then you're done with this video. Then you have uh, people will only be able to see their own documents. But the documents will actually show up in search results. And of course, you can go directly to them. Or if users have the, the enough permissions, they can modify the view to remove that filter. So it's not really a permission, but it's more of a convenience. If you want real permission settings, then you need to either teach the users or automate that with a workflow. And that's what I'm going to be showing now. So I'll create a new workflow. And it's going to be a list workflow connected to the homework document library. So set permissions is what we want here. And it's going to be a 2010 workflow, as I said. And now when I go in and look through the actions here, you'll actually not see any actions connected to permissions at all. To see those, you need to first create an impersonation step. And that impersonation step is run as you, the author. So of course you need to consider who you are when you're writing this. If you leave the company you know, or you're a consultant or something like that, then you should not do this in your own name because if your account gets blocked or taken away, then this will stop working. So you need to have a service account that never expires because with that account's permissions, that's what this workflow will run as. So that's an important thing, of course, to consider. Now let's go into actually setting the permissions. And I'll do that in the impersonation step. I'll make sure that my orange little cursor there is inside the impersonation step and then I'll find a few different items regarding permissions. So I can inherit, I can remove, I can replace and that's what I want to do in this case. I want to work on the current item and I want to set the permissions so that I, Peter Kelmstrom, I'm the teacher in this case I guess, and the user who created the item. Those are the only two people who have control, full control over this item. So that means that all the built-in permissions, the inherited permissions, will be replaced. So there will be unique permissions on this document, no inheritance. All right, so that's it. Then we're done with that workflow. I'll publish this. I get a warning that it's running with my permissions. So once this is published now, I'll go in as Antonio, go into the homework library, and I'll up upload a document. Gustav Vasa is a good one. This works also if you create the documents right here, but there's a bit of a delay then because the Word Online or Excel Online or Office Online locks the file. So that's something you need to be aware of. So let's refresh this now. Let's make sure, let's see what's happening here. So the Gustav Vasa document is of course not visible when I'm logged in as Peter Kelmstrom because now it's filtered in the view. But let's check the permissions on this document now. now. Let's share that and look at the manage access to that document. And it still has 
the default permission. So let's check what's happening with my workflow here. It's running or not, so let's go into workflows. Set permissions. Yes, of course, I forgot the most important step. Of course, I want this to uh, start workflow automatically when an item is created. I forgot that step. Right, let's publish again. But we can manually run the workflow now and see what happens. So now I kicked off the workflow. I'll just start that. Now it's running on that document. And let's check it again now. Check the permissions on the document. Manage access to it, and there we see it's just the owner and Antonio, the creator of the document, that can see this file now. So that's the end of this demonstration. We have a workflow that sets permissions, runs on start automatically when an item is created, and then it sets the permission, replaces the permission of the current item. So that will give you full unique permissions, item level security in SharePoint Online with SharePoint 2010 workflow. Thank you for watching this demo.